Hi guys, welcome back. Today I am back to my document camera and graphing. So I'm here. Um, today we're going to continue graphing with an even more difficult concept called increasing cost PPCs. But trust me, I'm going to get you through it. You will understand it completely by the end of this video. Our learning target today is I can analyze opportunity costs between goods with different resources. So what is an increasing cost production possibilities curve, an increasing cost PPC? It compares goods that are made with different resources. So our last PPC we did was goods that are the same resources, like fanny packs and Halloween costumes. These are goods that are different resources, like a door and hand sanitizer, okay? We use this graph to find the opportunity cost of making one good versus the other, but the thing about this graph is the ratio is not always going to be the same. Remember when we did uh, constant cost PPCs? It was a straight line graph and the ratio was always the same. One churro was the same amount of resources as five cinnamon rolls. No, I got that backwards. Something like that. <laughs> but the ratio was always the same no matter where you were on the graph. One of this product equaled so many of this good. Okay? This one is different in that the ratio is the same depending on where you are in the graph. And I'm going to show you that visually. It's graphed using a curved outward line as well. And it shows the maximum of good, two goods that could be made that have different resources. Okay? So let's take a look at it. Here is the same graph that I have down here. And I'm going to make it quite a bit bigger. Okay? So I don't care which one you look at, but essentially I'm going to be writing on this one. Okay? So we, as you can tell, We've got two goods that are made with different resources, pens and purses, completely different resources. This one is plastic and ink. This one is fabric and buckles or zippers, okay? So um, we also know that it's increasing cost because it is a curved graph now, not a straight one. This is curved. Constant cost is straight. Increasing cost is curved. Just remember that forever and ever and ever, okay? So, I've given you the answers already. Let's go through them. If I wanted to find the opportunity cost on an increasing cost production possibilities curve, it's going to be different between different points, okay? So, every single question is going to say, between points, blah, 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 and blah, 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 what's the opportunity cost of blah, blah, blah? So, that's how you can kind of help distinguish. So, let's look at the opportunity cost between points A and and B. If I were to move along the line from point A to B, what am I giving up? Well, at point A, I'm making 100 pins and zero purses. So I'm making no purses and 100 pins. If I move along the line to B, now I'm making 90 pins and one purse. So what did I lose in making one purse? What is 100 minus 90? It is 10 pins. Okay? So I did that one in red. Let me switch on over to purple here. If I move along the line, now I'm at B, and I want to go to C, I start out at B making 90 pins and one purse, but I want to make another purse. So I add a purse and move on down to C. How many pins did I lose? I go over here, 75. What is 90 minus 75? You're correct. It is 15. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, so 15 pins. You see how these two numbers are different? In our last graph that we did, they were the same. We'll get to why that is in a second, okay? Let me switch colors again. Let me do the next one in blue. If I am now at point C and my factory or whatever is making 75 pins and two purses, but I want to make more purses, I move along to D and I'm making 50 pins, and three purses. So what did I lose in pins to add another purse? I lost 75 minus 50, 25 pins. Okay? All right, last one. Let's do it in light blue. Now, I'm at point D, and I want to make it all the way to E. I no longer want to make pins at all. I start out making 50 pins at point D and three purses, but I want to make one more purse. When I make one more purse, I lose all of the pins. And now I'm at four purses 
and zero pins. What is 50 minus zero? 50 pins. Okay, so you see how the amount that we have to give up as we move down the curve increases. The cost, our opportunity cost, increases. At first, our opportunity cost was, eh, I make one more purse, I lose 10 pins. Big deal. By the end of it, if I make one more purse, I'm losing 50 pins. This is called an increasing cost curve, increasing opportunity cost. All right, so let's look at an example of it. Let's practice here. Oh, I moved it out of the way too fast. Same thing that is on the screen is what's here, okay? So let me choose a color. Blue. Sorry about the construction noise in the background. I apologize. If I start at A and want to go to B, how many water slides and books am I losing? And again, this is the same graph that I have right here if you're having trouble seeing it down, down here. A to B. If I start at A, I'm making 20 water slides and zero books. Zero. None. Okay. If I go to B, I'm making 18 water slides and 100 books. So I've gained 100 books, which is great, but I've lost how many water slides from 20 to 18? Two water slides. Okay. All right. Let's go for purple. B and C. If I start out at B, I'm making 18 water slides and 100 books, but I want to make more books. But if I use those resources to make more books and move along to C, I add 100 books. That's great. But I lose water slides. How many water slides did I lose from B to C? 18 minus 15 is 3. I've lost 3 water slides now. All right. Let's go with pink for the next problem. From C to D, I'm starting at C with 15 water slides, and my factory is also making 200 books. But I move on down the curve to D to 10 water slides, but 300 books. I've gained 100 here. That's fantastic. But what have I lost in water slides? From 15 to 10 is 5 water slides. All right. Last example. We're going to do it in red. D to E. At point D, my factory or my business is making 10 water slides and 300 books but I want to completely devote my resources to books. So I say, let's move to point E where we make no water slides. Now I'm making 400 books and zero water slides. How many water slides did I have to give up to make that last 100 books? From 10 to zero, 10 water slides I lost. The opportunity cost as I move down the graph, down the curve, increases. That's why it's called an increasing opportunity cost, an increasing cost PPC. So, as you saw in the example, the cost, the opportunity cost is always increasing. The ratio that we use when we have to do it with fractions is not going to be the same. Remember, on this curved increasing cost PPC, all the problems that I'm going to give you, economists specify between what two points they want to know the opportunity cost. And oftentimes we can't just point to the graph and say, okay, I can find it like I did in the last two examples. We have to use a ratio. We have to cross multiply and divide. And that's what we're going to practice, okay? So the same thing that you see in green on your screen is what I have down here. So I'm going to pull this up as big as I can make it. I'm sorry I can't make it much bigger. Um, and we are going to work out this problem right now. We are, again, comparing pins and purses. I kept the graph the same, so maybe I could help you out a little bit more. Okay? So what if the number I need to find the opportunity cost on isn't on the graph clearly or at all? Now we have to use ratios again. But the ratio will change for every single problem. That's unlike the graph that we did previously. Every single time you're going to have to find the new ratio. So our problem that we're asking ourselves right now is in green up here or on my little piece of paper down here. What is the opportunity cost of 10 pins between B and C? And I'm going to do this in light blue. Between B and C, what is the opportunity cost of 10 pins? Okay? So at B, I'm making 90 
pen and one purse. At C, I'm making 75 pens and two purses. So what does one purse cost? This is one. Well, one purse costs, what is 90 minus 75? It's 15. That is our ratio. That's not solving the problem. That's setting the problem up. So we've set the problem up with a ratio. Between B and C, one purse equals 15 pens. Our question is asking us, what is the opportunity cost of 10 pens? So now we make it into a cross multiply and divide problem. We know 10 pens. What's our unknown variable? Well, how many purses does that equal in resources? We've got our problem set up just like we did the other day. And from here on out, it's absolutely the same. We cross multiply and divide. 1 times 10 is 10. X times 15 is 15X. So 15X equals 10. How do we get that alone? We want to get that variable alone. We divide by 15. That ends up being 1. So x equals 10 over 15. If you simplify 10 over 15 or plug it into your calculator, it's going to tell you 2 thirds or 0.67. I'm going to leave it as a fraction because I like that fraction. It's a pretty fraction. 2 thirds is the answer. Okay? But that's just between b and c. That's just the ratio between b and c. One purse equals 15 pins. Let's try a different one. Same, same graph here. What is the opportunity cost of point, uh, point 0.5 purses between A and B? So we've changed where we're looking now. On this graph, we're looking at between A and B. We're going to have a new ratio. Increasing cost, PPCs have a new ratio for every problem. And you have to find that ratio to set up the problem and then cross multiply and divide. So what is the opportunity cost of 0.5 purses between points A and B? We first have to find the ratio. At A, I start out at 100 pins and zero purses. I move to B and I move down to 90 pins, but I'm making one purse. So in one purse, I've lost 10 pins. That's our ratio between A and B. One purse over 10 pins equals and then from the problem, we figure out what we know. We know the problem asks 0 0.05 purses, and our unknown variable is pins. So now it's normal. We can do the easy stuff, cross, multiply, and divide. 0.5 times 10 is 5. 1 times x is 1x. We know that that 1 doesn't really exist, so we know that now x equals 5 pins. The opportunity cost turned out to be a nice pretty number, 5 pins. Okay? All right, so let's do these one at a time. I'm going to do the first one with you completely, and then I'm going to have you pause the video, do two, three, and four by yourself, and then I'm going to hit play and explain them to you and show you the answers, okay? So let's do number one, and number one I'm going to draw on my graph in blue pen, um, light blue, okay? So number one, what is the opportunity cost of 10 pens between C and D? First thing I'm going to want to do is definitely look at that graph. Between C and D, what is the opportunity cost of 10 pins? So let's see where we're starting. We're starting at C, 75 pins, two purses. Okay, we move down to D. We're at 50 pins and three purses. So what is my ratio between these points? Well, I know that I gained one purse, right? So I already know that part of my ratio is going to be one purse. And let me label this. One purse. How many within C and D, what is the ratio for how many pins that I lost? 75 minus 50, which would be 25 pins. So I've got my ratio. Now I just start the problem. Well, the problem gave me what is the opportunity cost of 10 pins between C and D? I know 10 pins and I don't know how many purses, because that's what I'm going for, right? Now I have a problem. Cross, multiply, and divide. 1 times 10 is 10 equals 25 times x, 25x. Divide by 25. That cancels out. And x equals 10 over 25. 10 over 25 can easily be simplified to 2 over 5. Or you could plug it into a handy dandy calculator. You could do this, or you could do this. 
0.4 is going to be the same. So x equals 0.4 what? We were missing purses. 0.4 purses is the answer to number one. Okay? All right. I'm going to have you guys pause your video and do two, three, and four by yourself. When you come back, um, I'm going to have the answers on this yellow sheet of paper, and I will quickly, quickly go through two, three, and four. Okay? All right. Hopefully, you got the same answers as me. So, on number two, what is the opportunity cost of 20 pens between D and E? Between D and E, the ratio was for every one purse, we give up 50 pins. We fill in the unknown variable, which was X. We needed to figure out how many purses. And then from the problem, the known variable, 20 pins. Now remember from our last graphing video, always keep the same good in the same spot in the fraction. So my pins, I'm always going to keep on the bottom to keep it clear in my head. My purses, I'm always going to keep on top. Okay? We figured out, we cross multiply and divide, it is two-fifths or 0.4 purses. Always label your answers. Number three, what is the opportunity cost of 0.75 purses between points A and B? The ratio was different here. Between A and B, the ratio was every one purse has the same resources as 10 pins. We set that up. What are our known variables? Oh my goodness, Miss Keller, you didn't label your work. Who am I? Sorry about that. We always label our work so we know what's on top and what's on bottom. Okay? So one purse for every 10 pins. And then from the problem, we want to find out how much 0.75 purses is in the resources it makes to make pins. So pins is our unknown variable. We filled in x, cross multiply. We didn't have to divide because 1 times x is just x. So 7.5 pins is the answer to number 3. Number four, what is the opportunity cost of 0.5 purses between C and D? We had to find the ratio on the graph between C and D, and that ratio was every one purse is the same resources as 25 pins. You see how the ratios are different on every single one? It's because this is an increasing cost graph. It's a curved graph, okay? So we fill in from the problem what we know. They want to find out. 0.5 purses, how many pins and resources does that equal? Cross multiply and divide, we get 12.5 pins is the answer. All right, let's say you had some trouble with this, which would be completely understandable. I'm going to be linking Mr. Sarah's videos. He has two different practice problems in here that are different than the pins and purses practice problems that we have been doing. Um, and you will actually be watching these and be doing a formative assessment. If you need me to explain more and give you more examples, text me, email me, or I'll see you on Google Meets. Okay, bye guys. Thanks.